Hello and welcome to part 3 in the how to make a simulator game on Roblox. Today we're going to be focusing on saving data and making the player bigger. So let's jump straight in with the data saving. We're going to go into the stat script and I'm going to go over this quite quickly. I have got some other videos on data stores which I'll link in the description if you want to check those out. So first thing we're going to do is define the data store service. Okay, so local data store equals a game colon get service and this is going to be the data store service and then we're going to create our data store by saying get data store and you want to give that a name okay so i'm going to call it player save uh, three okay completely random so once you've got your data store set up what we can do is uh, down here in the player added uh, script we can firstly define our strength data and our rebirth data. Okay, I'm separating it with a comma because they are going to mean the same thing. Now they're going to be set to nil at the minute because we're going to do a pcall function. And a pcall function is a function where if the code inside of it breaks, then or errors, it's not going to break the entire script. It's, it's going to be contained within that function. Okay, so we're going to write uh, data from the data store to these variables. Okay, so uh, pcall returns whether it was a success or not, whether the code inside it ran without error, and if there was an error, it would return an error message, okay? So it's going to return uh, success and an error message, okay? There, there won't be an error message if, if success is, isn't is true, uh, if, if success is true, okay? Because everything would have gone well. So that is going to be equal to pcall function, and inside of here, we're going to set the strength data and the rebirth data to um, the data from the data store. So to do this, we're going to say strength data equals uh, data store, data store, colon get async, and then we're going to provide a key, and this just uniquely identifies the um, the data in for a specific player. So we want to get the strength data, so we're just going to do strength and then a hyphen. You can call it anything as long as it makes sense to you. So strength, hyphen, dot, dot, player dot user id okay so the unique the unique identifier is the player's user id and then this strength uh, string over here just tells us what we're saving okay so that's got the data for the strength and we can also do rebirth data and we can set that to data store colon get async but this time instead of strength we're going to say rebirths okay so rebirths then a hyphen and then we're going to say dot dot player dot user id Okay, so the rebirths and the strength in the string tells us the data that is stored, and then the player user ID tells us which player it's stored for. Okay, so now that we have got the data from that get async, we can say if success, so if the data store um, script worked fine, that function, if success, then we can say if there is strength data, so if it's not equal to nil, which it was set to originally up here because there was nothing assigned to it. So if it isn't, then what we can do is we can say strength dot value, which we defined up here, the strength number value, is equal to strength data. Okay, and we can do the same for rebirths. Rebirths dot value equals uh, rebirths data. Okay, so that is getting the data. Now we need to work on saving it. Okay, so this is very very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to drop out of this player added function, and we're going to say game dot players dot player removing so this is an event that will fire when a player leaves the game colon connect open bracket function and then we're going to pass through an argument of the player that's leaving okay so what we're going to do is we're going to do another p call so local success comma error message uh, error message equals p call function and inside of this p call function, we're going to just uh, set a value to our data store. So data store, colon, set async. Okay. And then we need to provide the key, which we're going to write to. And that key is going to be strength with the hyphen. Uh, and then dot dot player dot user ID to concatenate it together as one big key. And then we're going to do a comma and we're going to write the data, which is going to be stored. Okay. And this is going to be the path to their strength value so player dot leader stats dot strength dot value okay because we created it up here and you can see it's stored in the leader stats so we're going to this strength we're getting its value and we're going to store it to that key so it's stored in the data store so now that we've done that we can just write the same line again for rebirth so data store colon set async 
This time, however, the key is going to be rebirths with a hyphen and then dot dot player dot user ID to make it unique for that player. And same thing again, we're going to write to it the player dot leader stats dot rebirths dot value. OK, so that's just storing the data in the data store to a uh, player's key. And then up here, we're looking up that key and we're storing whatever get async returns from the data store in these two variables. We're checking to see if it was a success and if there is some data. And if there is, then we're updating their strength. Uh, and rebirths values up here to the data that was returned. Okay, so that is the data saving done. Now we can go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to just go and uh, publish the game, and let's go into um, into Roblox now to play it. So we're going to just click on play and load in here, and hopefully it should have saved. So let's go in and see if it has. And then once we've done this, we'll move on quickly to making the player bigger as you use the tool. OK, so joining server and I've got 3500 because that was what was um, originally stored and uh, because I've been testing this out before. So if I go ahead and get some strength, I've got 4500. So I'll leave the game and play again. And this time we should have the same amount of cash. So we'll go ahead and uh, wait for a server. And if we have got the cash, then that'll be great because we can move straight on. And there we go. We've got 4,500 strength and everything saved perfectly. All right, let's go back to studio then. And we're going to start working on the um, on making the player bigger. So to do this, it's really, really simple. What we're going to do is here in the player added event, we're just going to, um, before the, in fact, we'll do it after the data store. So we're going to create an event called character appearance loaded. And this is going to run when the player's character is fully in the game. So whenever they respawn, or when they uh, join the game, this is going to fire. So player dot character appearance uh, appearance loaded. Then we're going to say colon connect function character. Okay, and inside of here, we're going to make a variable for their humanoid, and this is going to be used for setting their scale values for their character. So humanoid equals character dot humanoid, and then we can say humanoid colon wait for child body depth scale because there are loads of values that are inserted into the humanoid and it's basically uh, a set of numbers and those values uh, deem how um, big the player's character is okay so depth scale dot value and now I've just worked out a nice little um, formula to calculate the size based on how much strength they have so you can say 0 0.5 plus strength dot value over 250 I believe this is a decimal number, which is why I'm doing the um, the uh, di division here. So it's just uh, taking the amount of strength they have. So if they have, say, um, 250,000, it will divide it by 250, and then it will add it to 0.5. Because you need 0.5 to begin with, else you'll be really, really small. Uh, and then we're going to do humanoid or wait for child. Wait for child. And this one's going to be called body height scale. So how tall you are. No, but because they've all got to be in proportion with the other values, then they've all got to be around the same, else you're going to look stretched. So this again is going to be 0.5 plus strength uh, dot value over 250. And let's just copy this line again. Copy it and paste it onto the next line. But we're going to change it from body height scale to body width scale. And that's going to be the same. And we're going to do... Uh, the same again, this time to scale their head with the rest of the body. So instead of saying body height scale, we're going to say head scale and give it the same value. And lastly, we're going to set their walk speed. So if they're uh, getting bigger, then they should be able to walk quite faster as well. So humanoid dot walk speed equals 16 multiplied by strength, uh, strength dot value over 250 and you can change these values if you want this is just what I've come up with but if you find something better then feel free to change it uh, however what we're gonna do is because this is only for the first time the player enters the game we're gonna make it so that if the player's strength changes so we can say um, strength colon get property changed signal yeah, and then that's gonna be the value so if the value of strength changes we can connect it to a function and this function 
is going to do the exact same thing. Okay, so we can just take this code, okay, where it changes all of the scales, and just paste it in here because it's only going to do this code once. But every time that strength changes, we need to update the player's um, scale. Okay, so let's uh, go and check this out. We're going to go into uh, the game and click on play. And hopefully our character should size up with the tool. So here we go. And I'm quite tall already, quite big, because the, the script has already changed my body values. But if we use the strength tool, you can see that I'm growing much bigger. Now, we do have a little problem here with the tool. Uh, it doesn't seem to be... Uh, increasing in size so i'll check that out for you and try and uh, we'll try and fix that in the next part of the series if you want to have a go at fixing it yourself though you want to look into the tool mesh scale okay and the, and the size of the other parts in the tool but it shouldn't be too bad to fix i'll see if i can get that fixed in the next part but we have added um, scaling to the character in this part let's have a look at the player if the character resets does it go back to zero no it doesn't you keep the same size which is great and when you click the tool, you gain strength as well. And on top of that, we've added data saving. So thanks for watching this part. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you haven't already. And if you'd like to take the source code, you can become a channel member. And uh, on top of that, you get a load of extra cool perks, which you can see by clicking the join button. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.